Hey everyone, you're watching my personal channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Just got back from EWA and Enforce Tech a week ago. I like to call it Metric Shot Show. Enforce Tech, it's the first half of the week. It's geared towards military law enforcement. EWA, more sports and outdoors oriented competition shooters. We're going to start with the top five pistols of these shows because that's always my favorite category. Although I've got to say this year was a little bit disappointing for my handgun homies. Now, talking about something that wasn't a disappointment that I got to see behind the scenes, and mainly I'm telling you this to drive CZ fanboys crazy. I know this is going to show up on the CZ subreddit, but CZ is going to be unveiling a new pistol this year, and in my opinion, it's going to be the best pistol they've ever made and the second best pistol they are going to make. Unfortunately, they didn't release it, so unfortunately it can't be on this list and no i won't give you any more hints so yeah enforce tech ewa for pistols like mid-afternoon shift at a strip club a lot of product just not what you'd want to spend money on number five these lists are always about the top five new guns at a show right otherwise i would have the hk vp9 cc and the revo arms is9 on this list too but both of those guns have been at prior shows it's tricky when there's an updated relaunch of a gun that's actually been out for a minute i normally try not to include like relaunched pistols or gen 2 pistols or whatever in this list but again because the new pistol showing was so pistol poor at this show I've got two on this list. Tanfolio, well known for producing extremely durable, extremely reliable, extremely pleasant to shoot accurate competition pistols. Many Tanfolio shooters prefer Massimo Tanfolio's design to the CZ-75, which is so dominant in the competition realm. Side note, Massimo, absolute baller. Every year he wears a blazer and a turtleneck with slacks at least once during the week. It's the most Italian shit I've ever seen, swear to God. If I remember to, if I remember next year, I'm going to bring a turtleneck and a blazer and interview Mr. T with the matching fits, and it'll be the funniest shit ever. Anyways, back to the pistol. This year, the Force Duty Tactical Pistol. A little bit of a quasi-redundant, wordy name for a gun, but we'll allow it because they're Italian and you can't print hand gestures on the side of a slide. So Tanfolio's focus typically on competition guns, but essentially what they've done here is taken the DNA of their competition pistols implemented it into a duty pistol with a polymer frame optics ready slightly heavier trigger to make it more appropriate for duty use they call this the force duty tactical pistol i believe the force pistol was first introduced in the 1990s this is the newest reincarnation which is updated and holy shit it might be available in 10 millimeters soon which would be incredible now i'm not much of a duty pistol guy because i don't shoot competition and anything that i would use as a duty pistol for home defense or something i have a long gun for so i don't really have much use for them but that said if tanfolio introduced this in a compact version that was glock 19 size or smaller i think it would pose real competition to say the shadow 2 compact they've done it in the past with the force lineup so i bet this will happen and it'll probably cost half as much as a Shadow 2 Compact. They're going to retail well under a thousand bucks. I think MSRP was 900 euro. Number four, the controversy slot, because you don't open a top five video with a $10,000 Bugatti pistol, but you certainly don't make it number one either. This interview for this gun is pretty awesome for so, so, so many reasons. I think you guys noticed all of them in the comments. By the way, the video for this gun from the show, Shaping Up, to be one of our most popular videos from Iwa Enforce Tech. It cruised past the 100,000 view mark in just a day or two, which is actually really good for a show video. Let's pretend you haven't watched the video. Let me set the stage. I'm talking to Serge from Beverly Hills Cop. Donny, this is covered this up. It's I'm like sorry. the breast of a dog to scrub for the customer. It's not sexy. He's telling me about this pistol called the Elysian. It costs 10,000 euro. To be fair, he's also making a less expensive version. That's a bargain basement, 5,000 euro. When I asked him what inspired him to make this gun, he said he was about to buy his first handgun, first handgun. And he decided he didn't like anything else out there in the market. So he makes his own first handgun. First of all, big props to this dude. Love the logic. I want to buy a car. I don't really like anything on the market. Why would I get a Camry? I'm going to build myself a McLaren. And both 
Myself, James Reeves, and Ian McCollum were still satisfied with Serge's pistol here because it's so well done aesthetically. It uses magnets instead of screws. Serge based it on this excellent system known as the CZ-75 Shadow II, arguably one of the best handguns of the world. So myself and Ian discussed this gun at length. We were pleased, but my God, the best or worst part of this video, depending on how you look at it, Jan, the guy I'm calling Serge, he's the guy who invented this gun. Super, super, super nice dude. He's passionate about his project. His dad and his uncle helped him set up the booth. His mom baked traditional Czech pastries for the booth. He's a very sympathetic character. This gun is ballsy. It's creative. Anytime I can tell someone has their heart in the fight, I want him to win. But I'm watching... Ooh. Watching Ryan, my camera guy and my hetero life mate, slowly pan the camera down towards the box because Jan's very proud of the box. He says the box costs almost as much as the gun and he won't stop talking about the box. Milled aluminum, GPS chip inside, biometric lock in the box that works with an app. It's of course beautiful, just like the pistol. Jan says it costs as much as him to make as the pistol. So imagine my sheer butt cheek sweating terror when I notice there's a huge glaring shirt with no pants or no underwear level typo right there in the box. Elysian, meant for gods. M-E-N-T, like Mentos for gods, not like designed for gods. I honestly, honestly thought about omitting this footage from the video, but he's so proud of the box and he talked so much about the box. I left it in. I was like, people won't notice. You did. People ask me, James, why didn't you tell them? I couldn't bear to do it. I'm a very direct person, but I'm also a little sympathetic. Some people even say that I can border on rude at times, but if you watch the video, you'll see why I just couldn't do it to this guy. So I let him parade around the emperor's new clothes the whole show rather than make him sad. Number three, thank God that one's over. I don't own any Turkish handguns. Those goddamn Turkish shotguns have completely turned me off to Turkish anything, but I've heard it on good authority from a number of people and a number of reviewers actually that, that I trust that many of the Turkish pistols out there exceed the quality and reliability of many American pistols out there. So I'm trying to keep an open mind here. In fact, I think TFB TV may actually be in talks about reviewing the budget combat master from Canik since people seem to love Canik's stuff. It's with that prefatory statement that I reluctantly add the Gearson Hunter, which is going to be called the EAA Hunter in the U.S. to this list. I'm familiar with Gearson. They've been in the business for three decades. They started out like many companies overseas that's building clones of existing designs for military contracts or under license. In this case, they started making the Beretta 92, Gearson did three decades ago for the Turks. It's against that backdrop that I feel slightly more comfortable listing the Hunter on this list. The Hunter's a fucking madman. That's the only way to put it. 10 mil has rendered 45 ACP hopelessly obsolete outside of suppression purposes. It's a beast of a cartridge. Gearson making a monster of a gun. To wield it, the Hunter will be in all steel frame 2011 using Checkmate 2011 magazines, 15 plus one rounds of 10 mil spitting them from a six inch barrel. This means that as far as 10 mil goes, the weight of this gun will probably reduce the recoil a bit while delivering a projectile that's going to slap like Ike Turner. Best of all, it's coming from Turkey, well, worst of all. But the point is, you know it's gonna be inexpensive is what I'm trying to say. Is it gonna be a staccato? No, 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 it's not. More like a turcado, am I right? <laughs> But I bet that unlike most 2011s these days, the Hunter is probably going to outperform its price. Number two was actually my most favorite pistol of the show. Literally the only handgun on this list that I am going to buy. The Bull Ultralight Pistol. Got to be on the list because technically, even though it's not new new, it's more like a Gen 2 version. I love it, but it wouldn't be fair for it to be number one, even if it was my personal favorite from the show, because it's not really new, 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 right? I already love this pistol. It's the only 2011 style pistol I own. It's great for carry. It's accurate, great capacity, even pretty reasonably priced. Here's my man, Ben, giving you the deets better than I ever could. This guy's real pro, love it. All right, so the Ultralight has been updated this year with user feedback in mind. So like I always say, we listen to you guys. So. Starting from the uh, tip of the gun, a new slide design with our new BAO patent pending optic system. I will tell you all about it in a minute. 
Uh, new slide design, like I mentioned. Uh, stainless steel, one piece guide rod, same model of trigger. The small parts are black now. There was a big request on the US side, so we delivered. And there's a new grip module with aggressive texture and improved ergonomics. So if you're familiar with our full size grip, it's pretty much the same, but in a compact package. It ships with a CCW oriented magwell, and now it ships with three magazines rather than two. There's a pro version of this gun. It's basically the same gun, but with a V6 ported barrel. We discussed this before, this is the year of the ports. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the same gun, the pro version means for us a ported barrel. So number two, it's no bull. Well, I mean, literally, it, it is bull, but I mean, you get it. Finally, the number one from the show. This was also a super popular video. Ian McCollum and I both agreed that the Rex Delta Maritime Edition was cool as shit. It was the first video from the show to cross 100,000 views for us. It was the second most popular pistol from the show for us behind the Elysian, but people love slowing down to watch Rex. So this was perhaps the real number one from the show. The Delta was made specifically for a NATO partner, along with this badass custom chest rig for an elite team that engages in underwater operations. They needed something that could absolutely withstand exposure to salt water, salt air, but they also wanted it to shoot accurately and to be reliable. The RX Delta is likely up to that task. I've tested this gun before, did a 1000 round burn down that it did quite well in, especially considering it wasn't cleaned or lubricated. We also dunked it a few times in water when we were doing the test. It almost sounds silly to say that in the context of comparing it to the saline ass blasting this gun's going to get from European Special Operations underwater units. But the point is, the Rex Delta, already a fantastic gun. This one's going to be fantastic-er. It's going to be made in several versions from the missionary position basic duty model all the way to being just shy of a competition gun with muzzle brakes optimized for use with a wet gun, larger magwells, and so on. I know this sounds dumb, but being from Florida, gear that's saltwater resistant has the, kind of this strange appeal to me, you know what I'm saying? Which is why I was one of the first people to buy the 226 Navy whenever they were first released about 20 years ago. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Florida, but if you saw that Kevin Costner movie, Waterworld, pretty much exactly that. So guns like this that are saltwater resistant, very important to Floridians to have on their battle jet skis. Also, speaking of wet, that moss gray drip on this gun gets me moist. I mean, I might wear a Delta Maritime in that chest rig with just trunks and rainbows to the Floribama Yacht Club. And if I go shirtless, I'll get them skirtless. Don't tell my wife I said that, I was just joking. At SHOT Show, our five-man TFB TV team filmed 86 videos. Fellas, we filmed 63 videos, just me and Ryan. 63 videos at IWA and Enforce Tech. If you like us, please support us and subscribe. Start at subscribestar.com slash TV. Ton of perks, ton of perks. Hear me out here. Including at least 10 giveaways a month. We're independent just because of that. We don't do pay for play. You can win one of 10 gift certificates that we give away every single month. Which handgun did you like the best? Let me know in the comments.